To see in this video how we can connect the energy meter DDSU 6666 on a photovoltaic inverter Solac X1 bus. Here you can see how we have connected the energy meter. We have an automatic main switch and water is below the automatic main switch. We already take the phase to pin number one of the power meter and the neutral to pin number two. As you can see, the energy meter has to measure everything that goes in and out of our... Everything that enters and leaves our house. It will measure all the imported and exported energy. That is why we have placed it just after the main circuit breaker. Here you can see at the output of the energy meter on pin number three that would already go a phase wire to the photovoltaic inverter and another phase wire to the different circuits that we have in the house. You can see that apart from the connections of alternating current, we have the connections of communication with the energy meter. In this case, if you use a cable of habitual network that you can use of some other application. You can see that we will use the blue wire on pin number 24 of the energy meter and the blue-white wire on pin number 25 of the energy meter of the power meter. Here in this schematic you can see that corresponds the pin number 24 of the energy meter blue wire with pin number 4 of the RJ45 connector. The same is true for the 25th pin of the power meter which corresponds to pin number 5 of the RJ45 connector which corresponds to pin number 5 that goes on the RJ45 connector that we would insert into the photovoltaic inverter into the PV inverter. Before proceeding with the configuration of the photovoltaic inverter we are going to check the parameters that are well configured in the power meter the parameters of communication and for it by means of short presses in the button that has the bathymeter we can go seeing the different screens of information you can see for example that the mains voltage is 234 volts the current passing through the meter is 1.42 amps 120 watts approximately of energy that we're importing energy that we're buying that would be the power that we're buying if that value is negative it would be energy that we are exporting to the electrical grid and well, we could see a series of values. We could see, for example, the voltage part, the current, the current, the power that we are buying. Voltage, current, power. We could see the frequency of the network and a meter that would indicate the... And well, a counter that would indicate all the energy that we have imported, as well as another counter with the energy that we have exported to the power grid. Here we would already see the configuration values, Mosbus protocol 8 and 1. This has been another of the configurations in 0001 Mosbus address that we have to have configured, as well as the VOS-3. So well as you can see with short presses, we can see the different information screens, and what we are interested in above all is the... What we are mainly interested in is the configuration that in this case has to be Mosbus 8 and 1 0, 0, 0, 1. And VAUS-3, those would be the configurations that the bathymeter has to have so that it can communicate correctly with the solar inverter. In the case that we have to configure the bathymeter with another parameter different from the ones we are seeing, we would have to hold down the button for about 5 seconds. You have already seen that with short presses, we can go through the different information screens, and with a long press, it does not matter where we are about 5 seconds. Here you can see how we enter the configuration. We have two parameters that we can configure. One is the 8 and 1, and then the Mosbus address 001. If in any of these two screens, while it shows us that information we touch with short presses, we are going to make, and we are going to change that configuration. So as I said, five seconds to enter the configuration. We release, and now if we could modify the parameter of 8 and 1, in this case for Solax, it has to be 8 and 1 as you are seeing now in the screen. And then the Mosbus address, we can also modify it with short presses, but it has to be in the Mosbus address number one. There you can see. As we have configured 8 and 1 and 0, 0, 0, 1, if we leave it like that for a few seconds, this information will be validated. And we would already have correctly configured the BAT meter. We already have correctly configured the BAT meter. We have all the connections, so we would only have to... Configure the energy meter within the Solax inverter configuration. So for this we will go to the Solax screen. And well as you can see here it gives us the information of the photovoltaic production. At this moment we have a production of around 860 watts. And if we go through the screens you can see that with the up and down key we can go through the different information screens. In this PGA red screen.
screen, it would give us the information of the bat meter. But as we still don't have it correctly configured, we don't have any information. So it is telling us that we don't have that information. So it is telling us that we don't have that information. It is indicating that we don't have that information of the bath emitter. To set up the bath emitter, we have to go to settings. We have to press and hold down the down button. We have to go to settings. We have to hold down and we are going to enter the password, which by default is 6868. We keep pressed and we have already entered the advanced configuration. Here, well, we have to go to the section of export control. We keep pressed and we enter in the configuration. Here we have to keep pressed for about three seconds. We place ourselves on disable and we are going to change to meter. When we have it changed in meter, we hold down again and we have validated the communication and configuration with the energy meter. Here in select mode must be in meter if we now exit with the button upward. Making short presses or a long press, you can see that we have exited to the main screen. We still have an output of about 880 watts. And now if we press down in the P grid section, we can see the information of the bat meter. Now we can see that we have the complete information. Both the power generated by the inverter and the grid power P grid. In this case in P grid, if we have a positive value, it means that we are injecting surpluses into the grid. If we have a negative value here in P grid, it would mean that we are buying energy from the electric grid. So we would have to take it into account since it is the opposite of the information we are getting from the inverter. It is the opposite of the information given to us by the bat meter. In this case, as I say, we have a solar production of about 880 watts. And an energy that we are injecting into the grid of 690 watts, which is the energy that we have left over. Because at the moment we have little consumption in the house, and as we have energy left over from the photovoltaic production, we are injecting it into the grid. If this value is negative, it means that we are buying energy. Now in the case that we want to limit this energy, given that we continue injecting about 700 watts into the grid. If we want to limit this export, we have to go back to settings. We have to re-enter the password. Let's go to export control. And here, once we are inside the export control located with the cursor on mode select, we give a short press and here we put the maximum injection value. In this case, as we do not want to inject anything, we are going to set a value of zero so that it does not inject any energy. In this way, we would perform zero injection to not pour energy into the grid. To not pour energy into the network, we validate it. And now when we have it at zero, we can go backwards. Here you can see how it has lowered the production to about 100 watts approximately. And in the P grid section here, you can see how we have zero watts. So we have zero watts. So it's correctly performing the zero injection to not export the surpluses to the grid. What the inverter is doing is lowering the power to not inject surpluses to the grid. To not inject surpluses to the grid, hence the value in P grid of zero watts. It should be noted that in some models of Solax X1, especially the most recent ones, the zero injection system does not respond with the grid code of Spain. So we have to change the grid code to a European grid code in order to change the grid code to a European grid code. For a European network code, for this we have to go to configuration. We have to go to the settings section. We have to enter the password 6868. We are going to enter in safety. And here we have to configure the network code of Europe. In this case, we have to look for EN 5549EU. With this network code, we validate it by pressing down and we could already leave. To check that we have well configured, we can re-enter. If we re-enter, you see that it has already memorized the network code for Europe. With this network code, as I said, we will not have any problem to be able to adjust the zero injection since it is a small firmware problem. Since it is a small problem of firmware and that well will be corrected, but until then, if you want to perform zero injection with these latest models of solar, you have to put this network code. Oh, 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 oh,